our hope. Like me and Alex were like, okay, maybe this will bring us a real band to, you know, Chicago and Chicago State can, you know, a lot of students who can't necessarily get away to these schools, even on scholarship, because a lot of these schools that come up here and promise full rides, they're not really truly full rides. Mm -hmm. um, so these kids that can't really get there, you know, we figured Chicago State would be perfect. Um, and there has been some changes in, in command over there and stuff like that. Um, and they got a new president who believes in, in the program. So the, school, the new school president is really where all that money kind of came from for those students now. Um, Cause now they're offering scholarships, which is cool. Yeah. Um, back then, I think the music department was mostly older people um, and choir people. Mm -hmm. So they couldn't really build a band from their actual students back then because they, I'm talking about people in their 40s and 50s at the time were mostly music majors back then um, and, and a lot of choir folks. Uh, and, and yeah, around 2008, 2009, something like that. And so when they got a new president over the school, uh, that president started believing in uh, Roxanne, Roxanne and Stevenson and want, wanting to see an HBCU style band on campus. Mm. So then they started allocating some money to give scholarships out. And um, so Ms. Uh, so Ms. Stevenson has been going around, you know, recruiting from where she can. She, uh, I believe she has quite a few students from Missouri now and stuff like that, and uh, a couple of from the islands and stuff like that. So they're slowly but surely starting to build a program over there. What would you um, give as an advice to, to a graduating high school student in terms of you know, I got a choice. I can go to Chicago State and, you know, be a part of that budding band program versus going out of state. Uh, you know, which would you encourage a, a student to do? It kind of depends on the student. So I was talking to a few seniors last year from uh, Rich Township, and some of them had already decided what they wanted to do, what schools they wanted to go to. And they, you know, their parents, uh, you know, figured out their financial situations and things like that. But there was this one kid uh, in particular who didn't know exactly what he wanted to do. Um, and financially, he didn't see himself being able to, to go to some of these schools that he really wanted to go to. So my suggestion to him was Chicago State. And those who are uh, undecided, my, Chicago, my suggestion is always Chicago State to them because they do have dorms. So you still get the campus living and they still get the experience what it is to be a full college student nowadays on campus, you know, living the campus life and everything like that. And they get a little bit of that HBCU experience um, because Chicago State is, is te technically not an HBCU. You can't historically be, you know, be a historical college when you were first known as a teacher's college. You were yeah. founded on those principles of HBCU. But um, yeah, honorary HBCU and, um, those students can still get that experience there. So for those students who might not be able to financially, you know, handle going away to school, I always push them towards Chicago State to still get that experience. Yeah, I, yeah I'm not going to lie. My my uh, first two years down at FAMU, I was telling everybody, like, get out of Chicago, even if it's four years, something like that, just to be able to see that there's a world that exists beyond Chicago because it's it's you know it's so much BS that that, that you got to go through living in the city and to be yeah. able to get out and see see what you know different people look and act like and what they do outside of Chicago it's it's a good thing as far as expanding your horizons and and you never yeah. know the type yeah. of people that you'll meet uh meet you know leaving Chicago mm -hmm. even if for a little bit again I only le le left for two years and it was mine it was a life changer for me. Yeah, and, and those, like I said, those students who, who can get away, who can go away, I tell them absolutely to go away. <laughs> but <laughs> if they just cannot go away, then I push them towards Chicago State. And like I said, especially out here because, you know, they're used to the suburban way of things. And band world out here is a little different than it was in the city when I was in school anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they go to Chicago State, they get a little taste of, they still getting a little taste of what a HBCU life 
kind of is like they have yard shows and all that kind of stuff. So they still get a little taste of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you aware of some of the the uh, other schools, more so uh, uh, downtown on the north side, that you know that are trying to get band band programs as well? Your, your, I, um... I remember at one point, I want to say it was Truman. Mm -hmm. Truman, Truman. Is yeah, Truman movie. had a drum line uh, for a minute, but they were the only ones that I know of that kind of wanted to go that route or tried to go that route. Yeah, the rest I mean of the that's in... like Vandercook. Vandercook is mainly, you know, it's predominantly white. You know, they've just uh, hired Roosevelt Griffin as a jazz studies teacher. So now they're starting to branch off and get a, get more into jazz. So that's pretty cool. But you're not going to get a marching band out of Vandercook. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're, yeah. Not really, you're not going to get a marching band out of Columbia or Roosevelt or any of those schools. Um, they have pep bands. Um, your typical PWI pep bands, but you're not gonna get a HBCU marching band out of those. Okay, okay, I got you. Okay.